This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Watch for free for 31 days by signing up at curiositystream.com slash HAI and using the code HAI. North Korea. It would be great as a reality show, but it's less great as reality. As much as this country likes to pretend that the rest of the world is made up exclusively of brainwashed heathens living in hellscape garbage fire countries, sometimes certain North Koreans, special enough to get a hall pass, need to get out, and sometimes other people go there to experience the dictator Disneyland. Now, there is a train to the DPRK from Russia and China, but honestly, what are trains good for? Other than low cost, long distance, time efficient, economically stimulating, carbon minimal, socially egalitarian, death reducing transport. Nothing, because they don't have wings. That's why North Korea has its own extra special tiny terrible airline. And here's some boring history, made possible by my declining audience retention statistics. Back in the 50s, the USSR was North Korea's sugar daddy, and so the airline was first established to fly to the eastern bit of the Soviet Union so that people could connect onto Aeroflot services to Moscow. In the early days, they flew exclusively Soviet planes, which sometimes didn't crash, and mostly focused on flights to the USSR and later China. Eventually, though, they got some big boy Aleutian IL-62 and Tupolev Tu-154s, which surprisingly are not the names of toaster models, but rather planes that could fly all the way to Eastern Europe. That meant that they could finally fly the crucial non-stop route of Pyongyang to Moscow. They also eventually added some flights going all the way to some other Soviet United places like East Germany and Bulgaria. But then the USSR became USS not, North Korea and Russia's relationship diminished, and Air Koryo started flying to some definitively not Soviet places. As recently as 2010, they were flying to far-flung destinations like Zurich, Budapest, and Prague, but then the DPRK's flag carrier ran into two major issues. One was that they were added to the prestigious airlines banned in the EU list, meaning that, for the most part, they could no longer fly through, to, or from most of Europe, and two was that, especially in the past decade, a whole host of sanctions were imposed on North Korea by both individual nations and the United Nations. These sanctions, preventing all UN member states from conducting almost all types of trade with North Korea, mean that there's barely any economic activity with the country, so there's little reason for people to travel there. Nowadays, Air Koryo is more modest in size compared to its former glory. They fly to just five destinations, Vladivostok, Shenyang, Beijing, Shanghai, and they just recently started a new route to Macau in August 2019 to allow the small number of North Korean elites to get to this gambling hub for some good old fashioned sinning. Since this longest flight is only three hours long, they don't have to deal with some of the complications that would arise from their crew liking some of their layover cities a little too much since they don't have to have any overnight layovers. They do, however, have plenty of complications arising from operating from one of the most sanctioned countries on Earth. These sanctions have long prevented them from purchasing Boeing or Airbus planes, so they bought Soviet or Russian built planes, but then North Korea accidentally pressed the big red sanction me more button. On November 28, 2017, North Korea launched a ballistic missile that landed uncomfortably close to Japan and, in response, the UN dropped the mother of all sanction packages outlined in this bad boy document, UN Resolution 2397. This resolution resolved, among other things, that all UN member states would prohibit the direct or indirect supply, sale, or transfer to the DPRK of all transportation vehicles. It clarifies that this includes everything between HS codes 86 and 89, which are codes used by custom organizations, and if you pull up HS codes 86 through 89, you'll see that that includes, among other things, locomotives, tractors, tanks, baby carriages, buoys, and aircraft. Therefore, since that's a United Nations sanction, that means that North Korea can't buy aircraft from, uh, let me pull up my map, um, these countries. They could always buy from, like, Kosovo? They're not a UN member. I wonder how their aircraft manufacturing industry is. Not that Kosovo is a country, or not a country, or part of a country, or not part of a country. Just forget I ever mentioned Kosovo. Anyway, what this all means is that Air Koryo can only operate aircraft it had pre-2017, and those were almost all old Russian, Ukrainian, or Soviet planes. UN Resolution 2397 specifically allows the DPRK to buy spare parts for their passenger planes, presumably to be sure they don't fall out of the sky, so that's not an issue, but many of their planes are old and only getting older. That's how time works. So their lack of plane buying ability certainly is becoming more and more of a problem. While plenty of countries regularly violate the sanctions in secret, <laughs> Russia, 
it would, uh, would certainly raise some questions if North Korea just suddenly started flying around as shiny new Russian jets, I'd imagine. UN Resolution 2270 also bans all sales of aviation fuel to the DPRK, but it specifically includes an exemption for fuel used by passenger commercial flights. It does, however, warn its members to only sell the exact amount an aircraft needs to get from, in the example of Russia, Vladivostok to Pyongyang and back to Vladivostok. No more that could sneakily make its way into a military jet, you know, somehow. Perhaps the craziest bit about Air Corio, though, is that you can book a flight on their website just like any other airline. It's scarily easy. The reception when you get there? Well, that might be less than warm. Of course, on their rickety Russian jets, Air Corio lets you experience aviation's past, but if you want to see what flying will be like in the future, you should watch Into the Skies, a new episode of the Curiosity Stream original series, Speed. This covers how aircraft design will change to cope with a time not far off when 10 billion passengers will fly each year. This is just one of more than 2,400 titles that you can watch on desktop, smart TV, iOS, Android, Apple TV, Roku, Chromecast, and more platforms through CuriosityStream. They're the perfect site for anyone who likes being entertained and educated simultaneously. What's best, for HAI viewers, you can watch any of these more than 2,400 titles for free for 31 days by signing up at curiositystream.com slash HAI and using the code HAI.